what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out brian danielson versus daniel bryan interesting topic interesting video i'm looking forward to it basically brian danielson is holding it down in AEW, and when he's in wwe he went by daniel bryan so we're gonna see what they're trying to com what he's trying to compare here who uh, has a better run so far granted brian danielson is just starting up in aew and uh you know daniel bryan had been in a uh, wwe for quite some time so i'm interested uh to see um what comparisons what are people saying do they prefer him in aew or do they prefer him in wwe this should be a good one appreciate all the love and support on this channel road to 70k man let's do this thing the best professional wrestlers of all time i firmly believe you can seriously make an argument of him being included in anyone's top 10 list of the best wrestlers of all time yes obviously those lists are subjective but it wouldn't shock me if someone included him in theirs starting his career in 1999 he would wrestle under his legal name brian danielson he was a part of the indies for a decade competing at the highest level in many different promotions that consisted of the wwf new japan oh, wow. and ring of honor Dan i didn't know he was in uh he even competed in wwf at one time did not know that that's awesome Justin quickly made a name for himself and Vince McMahon brought him back to the WWE, but this time around, he made the decision to actually utilize him, making him a premier star for his company. I think it's clear that Daniel Bryan was never going to become a top draw in 2000, like it just was never going to happen. The WWF roster was way too stacked at the time. Mm -hmm. It was probably a good thing that he did not stay either because Bryan really perfected his craft in the indies finding his identity. And that's good. Sometimes it, it works out. Sometimes you not getting to that spotlight that you wanted to at that particular time, especially in wrestling, and you go to the indie scenes, you kind of build your craft, build your name up, and then be a, being able to come back at a later time, it works. And I don't think we would have gotten the Daniel Bryan we have now if he didn't, you know, if he was, if he stayed in WWF, WWE at the time. And that persona would become the American Dragon. Mm -hmm. Brian was a total badass, ready to kick the heads off of his opponents. Rather than focusing on the sports entertainment aspect, he fell in love with the professional wrestling side of the business. And that is why the American Dragon was one of the best athletes in the squared circle. Mm -hmm. And so when he returned, Daniel Bryan had a fast rise to the top. It only took him a few years to defeat John Cena to win the WWE Championship in the main event of SummerSlam. Of course, that reign didn't last too long since it was never the long-term plan for the WWE, which is why he lost the title to Randy Orton on mm -hmm. the same night. Bryan's popularity, though, is skyrocketed. The WWE Universe wanted nothing more than to see Daniel Bryan win the belt again, and the fans actually forced WWE to give them what they wanted. They hijacked the Royal Rumble, rejected Batista, and yep. expressed their opinions all over social media. The WWE listened to their audience, and Bryan won the WWE Championship again. Of course, with the help of CM Punk actually leaving the company, that kind of really set things up. But ultimately, this was one of the few times WWE actually listened to the fans, and it actually paid off at WrestleMania 30, making Batista tap out. It was a beautiful sight to see. In fact, the storyline is still one of my favorites of all time. Yep. Anyways, we know the rest of the story. Daniel Bryan got hurt, he came back, he got hurt again, and eventually he retired for a couple of years. That didn't stop him from chasing his dreams though. Bryan fought for years to come back, mm -hmm. and he did make that huge return after being cleared by the WWE doctors. He had an exceptional second run with the company, even winning the WWE Championship for the third time in his career. Mm -hmm. Things did change in 2021 though. Daniel Bryan was not happy with WWE anymore. He wasn't being treated badly or booked terribly. The opposite, actually. Bryan main events at WrestleMania 37. Which is true. And a fantastic main event. Enjoyed that main event. Definitely one of the best matches of 2021. Um, but yeah, man, he, he was actually getting booked pretty well. He was in the main event scene. So, And he even said that when he went to AEW, like, he was actually, you know, he was okay with it. He just decided to leave. He wanted to go somewhere fresh. He, like, he, he wasn't tripping with how he was being booked at the time, so. 
Instead though, he felt unfulfilled. And that is the contributing factor that led him to join AEW returning as Brian Danielson. And so far, he's had an incredible run with the young it's promotion. True. We are seeing a totally different version of Brian that we were used to from the WWE. And that's why I thought it would be an interesting idea to compare the two and see which one is better. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. I feel like AEW allows him to be more like true to who he is. The American Dragon. Like he's not cookie cutter. He literally will come out there and beat the crap out of you. With no hesitation. He will he does not care. The fact the little I, I don't know if it was Colt Cabana. I think it was. The fact I think that was like last week or something like that, where he, his tooth it came out, and the fact he was healing it up with his tooth. Like, bro, it was just I like this. And granted, you can say, Oh, he's not really a heel, but he kinda is. He's he's more on the, the heel aggressive side. He's not out here actively, like, you know what I'm saying, trying to attack people from behind. But it's more so, like, I really know I'm better than you. I literally can kick your ass, and this is just really what it is. So, I, I like this. They let him be more free, especially on the mic, especially in the ring. The first thing that needs to be discussed is the difference of the wrestling between both versions of Danielson. In WWE, Dan O'Brien was easily one of the best performers in the ring. He was. Brian had many fantastic matches fantastic. in his decade-long career for the WWE. The match against John Cena that was mentioned earlier was as good as it gets. It is actually one of John Cena's best matches yes, ever. Yes, it was. Dan O'Brien also took Triple H to the limit at yep. WrestleMania. That opening match between Dan O'Brien and Triple H, fantastic, fantastic way to open up WrestleMania. Great match, great match. Giving him one of the better matches that he ever had at the grandest pay-per-view of them all. The WrestleMania 35 match was excellent Fantastic. as well and made Kofi Kingston a true star in the business. And who could forget about my favorite match of all time, Brock Lesnar versus... And that was a good match too. Even though Daniel was a heel, people were still wanting Daniel Bryan to win the match. Oh man, so good. Imagine this... Originally, this match was supposed to be set up for him... After he won at WrestleMania 30, he was supposed to end up dropping the belt to Brock Lesnar. That was what uh, reports were saying is at SummerSlam. And just imagine the Yes movement being at what it was. I'm not sure if it still would have been as hot. But being at what it was and him going against Brock Lesnar, oh, man, it would have been beautiful. It would have been beautiful to see because people were still kind of hating Brock Lesnar because you know saying he beat the streak or whatever so it would just would have been a beautiful sight to see but nevertheless the mess Survivor Series fantastic this is Daniel Bryan I think that is the perfect wrestling match even before leaving WWE Bryan put on some bangers against Roman Reigns mm -hmm. and Jay Uso it is clear that he is one of the best to ever do it in a WWE ring What's more impressive is that his matches are even better in AEW. Yep. It the seems like WWE was slightly holding him back a little bit in his wrestling ability in that ring. Can't wait to see him versus uh, uh, Adam Hangman Page, bro. I, sign me up. I, I wish I could re uh, I'll try to react to it, like do a live stream reaction if I can. But, yo, if I can't, I'm just going to watch the match and get my thoughts and opinions on it. Ooh. Which is fantastic. Can't wait to see them go at it. Ring, and that is not the case in all elite wrestling. He's been given the opportunity to give every single match his 100% effort, and it is showing. Brian Danielson's already put on tons of incredible matches. Mm -hmm. He had that outstanding performance with Kenny Omega in New York. The following week, him and Nick Jackson had a wrestling clinic. After that, we saw the dream match between Brian and Suzuki. It was utter violence. Mm -hmm. Eddie Kingston, Miro, Bobby Fish, Dustin Rhodes, and others have also come up and stepped up to the challenge, and they had their best matches in their careers against Danielson. This is a really special run. I really think that it would have been really nice to see him wrestle like this in WWE yeah, rather than always being the underdog, but it is what it is. There's also a lot of other matches in Ring of Honor where Brian Danielson put on classics before arriving to WWE that is worth checking out. Because of all these reasons, I'm going to give Danielson the win here, making it 1-0. to zero. All right. Interesting. The other most important... 
I can agree with him on that. One to zero. I, it makes sense. His wrestling is is more free. He can just go out there and do, do what he has to do. He doesn't come off as the underdog. He comes off as, yo, do not take him for granted. He will beat the crap out of you. And I like that component of professional wrestling is the character work. This is definitely equally important and I would even say maybe slightly more essential at least to me. I'm more of a promo guy who loves to see stories develop. I've said that many times in the past. Dan O'Brien was a great character in the WWE. However, mm -hmm. I feel like he was kind of one dimensional. The creative team usually had him portray the underdog in most storylines, and while this worked countless times, it was a little repetitive. Mm -hmm. Dan O'Brien proved that he could work better as a villain, and he was tremendous during his Team Hell No run, yeah. and Brian was on a totally different level when he was the Planet Champion. The problem was that those heel runs did not last too long. Mm -hmm. The WWE turned him babyface way too soon many times, not allowing those characters to play out. Thankfully, AEW has given him complete freedom and he turned heel actually a couple weeks ago. And I know it's really early to tell, but I am more excited to see this character and where it goes compared to his babyface runs. I like it. Like I was just saying, him turning heel or some could say maybe tweener, but he's more of a heel here. Him turning heel works. It just works because we you're used to. You know who Daniel Bryan is, you know, in WWE. You're used to the goody two-shoes, the underdog, overcome all the odds. Now, he's the American Dragon. You don't give a fuck. Bro, I'm going to beat you, take your title, and go home and chill. That's I like that. I, I enjoy his character in AEW a little bit more because it just seems more It seems more free. Like I said, his wrestling moveset seems more free. His character seems more free to just kind of, you know, do what he want. And I like that. It doesn't doesn't give me the underdog vibe because he's not the underdog. In WWE, Danielson has been an absolute savage on the mic yep. as the bad guy. And he even celebrated a victory with a broken tooth of his opponents. This man is about to have the best character run in the history of his career. And I'm going to give Danielson the win again here because I feel like this is something totally fresh and unique. It is now two to zero. I agree. When booking a star in the wrestling promotion, presentation is very critical to the success of said wrestler. Tony Khan has done a really good job at making Brian Danielson feel like a top draw. His uh -huh. debut was well produced. He's also undefeated right now, beating everyone in his path. Brian was also pushed to the AEW World Championship picture quickly because he knows he is a superstar. Yeah, they pushed him to the title like relatively quick. Like, he's going for the head title now. And that's because it's, Dan it's Brian Danielson. His his in-ring work says it all. So, I, ah, man, I'm, I'm interested to see where they take this, bro. I really am. Even before his time in WWE, Brian Danielson was a big name in the indies. However, the WWE is going to get the victory here because Brian managed to become a top guy in an ocean. You see, I think AEW is still extremely young, and they mm -hmm. are a pond right now compared to WWE's ocean. It is not I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. It's like he became a top guy in a in a sea of actual other potential top guys. Not to say that AEW doesn't have it, but you know, say so they've had they they you know they're building up their talent to become those household names. Daniel Bryan became a household name with other household names there that they were trying to go with so i get what you say there it's not too difficult for someone like brian to come into aw and become a top star on the contrary it is a very difficult task to become a wwe champion in wwe and remain on the top for many years mm -hmm. Dan brian joined the biggest wrestling promotion in the world and made it to the top of the mountain he stayed on the top thanks to the presentation of his character and his in-ring work Dan brian wins this category making it one that. to two I think history is significant. It should be a category that we consider, and if we do take this into account, then obviously Dan and Brian will win instead of Brian Danielson. There's just a lot more that he accomplished. Well, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't have probably put this category in the video because that's like a that's a, a category that you know you can't really compare, obviously, because he had a longer run in WWE. He just got an AEW. So I wouldn't have 
actually put this in the video. My personal opinion, you know, I would have came up with another category because history, people know who he is because of the Yes Movement, because of, granted, you know, you got ROH and what he did in the Indies, but we're talking about a lot of people, a lot of the, the casual fans, they know who he is because of the Yes Movement. And there's nothing wrong with that. That made him more of a household name during his time in the WWE. As I said earlier, he battled against some of the greatest in the business like John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, Randy Orton, Batista, CM Punk, AJ Styles, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and the list goes on and on. He's also a decorated champion, winning practically every title on Raw and SmackDown. Mm -hmm. He's had many moments that people will remember forever. Dana Bryan is a WWE legend. Brian Danielson has had some great matches in the 2000s, but that's about it. His run in AEW is way too short to really determine anything too monumental. That means that Dan O'Brien ties it at two yeah, that was a piece. Kind of like the final verdict is that it is going to be a draw between Dan O'Brien and Brian Danielson because honestly, both versions of him are great. I can't choose one being better than the other. I could have easily created another category to pick a winner, but I couldn't think of anything because he's such a well-balanced wrestler in any promotion. Whether he's Dan O'Brien in WWE or Brian Danielson anywhere else, hmm. he's always one of the best in that ring. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> it it kind of it's kind of a mute point because I thought you know he was gonna at least pick one over the other. Granted, there's nothing wrong that he you know he he likes them uh, like the versions of Brian Daniels and Daniel Bryan WWE's version AEW's version. He likes them equally. I just felt like that last category, the history one, that was just kind of a give me to tie it up when it's like you can't really you shouldn't compare history because you can't. You know what I'm saying? So I I don't know. Me personally, if we just take the history out of it, I do like the new version. Well, the version that, you know, uh, was around in ROH, I never really got to see. But I'm, I'm starting to see that now. Brian Daniels. I like his version. I like that version of, his, of the character. I do. Because it's him. Not to say there's nothing wrong with Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, what he did in WWE, fantastic. Enjoyed it. Memorable definitely future hall of famer of course but at the same time his new character is fresh it's something new and it is true to him it's true to the guy himself and i love it i love it I, i'm enjoying it he doesn't come off as the underdog he comes off as someone that legitimately will hurt you and i like that so comment down below let me know how do you guys feel? Do you guys like Brian Danielson or do you guys like Daniel Bryan, the AEW version of him or the WWE version of him? Comment why or why not, or if you like them equally the same, let me know. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.